Nah, we're just kidding. <laughs> It's a smoky Saturday morning. Taylor and I have our coffee and I don't know, we always seem to kind of like meet you guys in the morning. I don't know why that is, maybe once we start we just don't take the time to, to record anything. The dogs are currently full of energy and more energy than we are. They're having tons of fun. Anyway, we wanted to do a quick video um, to kind of recap what stage we're at right now. Um, a lot has happened. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna have to pause. I gotta like stop these guys. What are you doing? Uh, the dogs are having a good old time playing around and chewing on wood, so. You know, for them, it's a great Saturday. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been working pretty much all week mm -hmm. on um, electric and plumbing and getting those things finalized. We made kind of a last minute decision to um, get the house NOAA certified. And that was because Marina's mom uh, and sister went to kind of a tiny house expo show. Oh, Marina's mom? Marina's mom, Taylor's mom, Marina, uh, went to uh, a tiny house expo show over in Seattle, and they met um, some people who were representing NOAA, and uh, it just, you know, it seemed like a kind of a good idea to have some authority kind of give the house a, a look at and make sure that everything's being done correctly, and... The seal is kind of like, you know, just icing on the cake, I guess. If we go to sell it later on, we'll be able to, you know, hopefully recoup the cost of, of the nose certification. It's about $2,000. Mm -hmm. um, but whoever decides to buy it, you know, knows that it's has verification that it's built built well. Mm -hmm. So, Which was important to us because we are, you know, taking steps to make sure everything is built well. And right. We're questioning our dads, who are both construction workers. Um, that was their profession. So we've, we've. Yeah, no, we, we've we've used good materials and we've used good building techniques and we've taken. <laughs> Come on, Taylor, keep it together. No, oh, no, it's all over my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Taylor can't record a video and drink coffee at the same time. Um, but yeah, we've 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 taken the time, we've spent the money to to build it right and and use the right materials. So, you know, why not spend a little extra money and have someone you know put the stamp of approval um, saying that yeah they did do that. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I've actually gone through the first three stages of inspection. So we got the trailer inspection the framing inspection and plumbing and electrical inspection. So right now we are at insulation stage. Uh, so we're, we're getting insulation in. And P.S. we passed all of them. Yeah, we so passed, passed them all with flying, with flying colors. So they're, uh, we were very happy with that. And uh, it's really kind of an, uh, a simple process. You, you sign up, you go through um, kind of these uh, affirmations or, or you go through these, uh, you know, you sign these documents saying that I've got used these building procedures and then they do kind of a live, um, 
video chat kind of thing um, where you share your screen on your mobile device and or share your camera on your mobile device and you walk through and they ask to see certain things and look at details and that's you know kind of how they they do the whole inspection so it's pretty cool um, so like I said we have installation inspection left and then final inspection so um, everything looks to be on track to get that certification without any problem uh, other than that, you know, like I said, we're kind of at installation stage right now. So we have um, the rock wool going in the walls. Taylor and um, and her uh, dad were working on the uh, foam insulation in the in the roof or in the ceiling. So it's going to be two inches of uh, R Max rigid foam up there, and then three and a half inches of of rock wool. So it'll be a combination, and we're hoping that that will eliminate any uh, moisture and condensation issues inside because it's going to be a sealed cavity in the in the ceiling. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm excited to get really get the roof done, actually, because or the ceiling. I keep calling it the roof. Really get the ceiling done and get the tongue and groove on. Uh, because that wood has been delivered and I really want to get it installed before it, any moisture or uh, unforeseen weather events um, you know uh, jeopardize the integrity of that wood mm -hmm. we did have a very um, kind of dramatic morning yesterday there's a huge lightning storm uh, lasted probably 40 minutes and one bolt of lightning struck about a mile away and struck up a, a small little brush fire. Um, and we got really lucky that our volunteer fire service caught it super quickly, got it out within, I think, within a half an hour. Um, so it didn't really spread uh, to cause any major, um, any major issues up here. So that's kind of where we're at right now. I got the uh, water heater mounted on the backside. Um, still working on uh, making up the mains panel, uh, getting all the breakers and all that kind of stuff in. So that's really kind of the stage we're at. And hopefully we can do some more short videos of uh, the individual processes that we're doing. Smile, Taylor. So this isn't my best look. It's been... I don't know, we've been up here since 8 a.m. I think it's around 3 o'clock now. Finishing up this Roxel insulation in the ceiling. So there's two, two inches of um, polyiso foam above the three and a half inches of Roxel. And I'll tell you right now, like putting those two together, it was a lot of labor. I mean, the foam took a lot of labor to cut and to fit and get all the gaps filled with spray foam and then you got to go over the whole thing again with the rock salt, but I think it's really going to produce a really high quality uh, insulation barrier and hopefully avoid any condensation problems to really try and put some extra insur insurance on it. We're putting this certain, uh, certain teed, certain teed. Yep. That's how you say it. Uh, membrane. So it's a smart membrane. What happens is if, if uh, moisture builds up in the, ceiling cavity, the membrane will let the moisture come out into the um, space of the home and evaporate hopefully, you know, get go out of a vent or something like that. And then if the interior of the home is more moist than the wall, than the ceiling cavity is, it will stop that moisture from getting into the ceiling cavity. So it's kind of like a one-way um, vapor barrier, which is really cool. Uh, so the way that we're putting this together, it's actually super easy. We did it in two pieces, two 14 foot chunks. And what we did was there's a nice little crease right down the middle of the membrane. And I just took that crease <clears throat> and went right along the ridge line. And I just stapled it the whole length and kind of let it just drape down uh, like a tent. And then starting in the center of each sheet, I just went right down the rafter and stapled it off. And I did that on both sides, so that kind of like opened it up. And then from the center, I'm gonna I'm going outward to, toward each corner. So that way I can pull a real nice tension to it as I go. And kind of, you know, get get a decent 
um, tension in between these baits. It's not going to hold the rock sole up. It's really the the tongue and groove is going to do that for us. But at least there isn't like you know bubbles and waves and all that kind of weird stuff. So I'm going to sneak down here, finish off this row, and I'm just stapling every 12 inches. And then when I get to the very corner here, I flip the stapler around so I can really jam it into the corner there because. From there, it's going to come down uh, at least six inches. I mean, this is a good foot overlap. I bought the 10 foot six uh, length roll at 100 feet. So um, we have a pretty good overlap on either side. And then I did about a six inch overlap, uh, which is what they call for is six to eight inches um, on the end. So then I'm not wasting too much of the length. So I'm just going to keep going and I'm going to staple through here. And once we're done with this, then we get to install the rock sole in the walls. That's going to be a lot of fun. So it's the end of trip number three. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're probably in, I think somewhere between week five and week six total of the build. And it's been a pain in the ass a couple weeks, I'll tell you that. So we traveled up here in my parents' RV. Awesome little, you know, 24 foot Mercedes RV. But we roll into town, right when we roll into town, uh, we get a check engine light and thing goes into limp mode and we end up going through this whole fiasco of having to take it to the shop like seven times um, to try and get this thing fixed and hopefully today it's fixed because otherwise we're not getting out of here. Uh oh, yeah. which I'm, I'm going to be pissed about honestly if it's not fixed. Uh, so we have to keep, you know, all these trips taking it to the shop. We kind of really lost... Um, a couple days worth of work, I well, think. Well, putting it in perspective, it's like three hours round trip. Yeah, Two I mean, hours? once you deal with the shop and everything, it's three hours round trip to the shop. So it's like seven we trips. Made seven round trips, yeah. Yeah, so it's 21 hours, right? Yeah, 21 hours of dealing with this BS. And the biggest, I mean, part of it's our problem because we brought the cat with us and it's in the RV. Indy's in the RV. So we have to keep bringing it back and taking it back instead of leaving it overnight because. You know, we don't want to leave the cat in the RV at a shop for like a week on end. So mm -hmm. anyway, enough about the, the pain in the ass that we had during the trip. We did get a few things done. Uh, so we got like 95, 98% of the insulation done. There's a couple little tiny strips like whoop, that right there. Uh, but the rock wool has been pretty nice to deal with. I mean, of the three insulations or yeah, four insulation types that I have experience with being foam, cellulose, fiberglass, and now rock wool. I definitely like rock wool the best. Uh, it's the easiest to work with. It still does irritate. I mean, you know, you got to wear gloves, you got to wear a mask because it'll make you cough. Uh, but it's definitely a lot nicer to install. Um, up top here, you can see we got all the insulation done up there. We got two inches of uh, rigid foam and then under that we have three and a half inches of the rock wool followed by the certainty um, membrane and I think I already did a video about this so I'm not gonna go into too much detail on the ceiling insulation yeah. um, but we did start tacking on the tongue and groove uh, we got super exciting. four rows in yeah we're, we're excited about that because you know you kind of finally get to see what the finished interior products gonna look like uh, I went through three different uh, purchases and returns of these can lights uh, to find the right trims that we liked and to find trims that actually fit in the cans. It's kind of surprising that you buy a four inch trim can or can trim and it doesn't fit a four inch can. Anyway, uh, so what we were hoping to get done uh, versus what we did get done, we were hoping to get. Taylor, you gotta come closer because you're, you're so out of focus here. <laughs> um, we really wanted to get most of the TNG up completely. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we have all the, the tongue and groove, and we're, we primed it all. It's all, woo, let's look outside. Uh, there they are. It's all primed and sitting on the scaffolding. So we gotta bring that in before we leave. So. It doesn't get completely battered by the weather. Uh, so, partially excited with our progress, partially bummed by not getting as far as we really wanted to. 
kind of an unknown when we're going to get back up here because I got a big project at work that's going to take at least a month. Um, so I'm not sure if I can squeeze another trip in the middle there. It might be October, which is it'll a, definitely be snowing. Yeah, beginning a rainy, rainy, <laughs> snowing season up here. So, uh, kind of a little frustrated about that, but you know, uh, we'll figure it out. Anything else that we need to talk about? Oh yeah, on the back of the the unit, we fin pretty much finished. Shane and I finished the. Uh, come on, Taylor. Walk with us. Uh, Shane and I pretty much finished the utility box back here. Oh, uh, how do I shoot it without me in the way? Okay, um, so it's about a 20 inch bump out, <clears throat> five feet wide. Same uh, roof pitch and everything, same as the you know roof pitch up there. But inside, uh, got the electrical box. Haven't made any of this stuff up yet. Uh, just kind of strung it all in there, but we do got the ream uh, seven gallon per minute tankless water heater in there. So I'm stoked on that. Uh, got my plumbing stub outs and my gas stub outs ready to ready to hook up, um, and all the valving and all that kind of stuff. Uh, all of the utilities are going to come in from the exterior here. They're going <clears throat> going to have gas water electric are all gonna uh, come in through the side of the box and then we haven't really figured out what kind of door this is gonna look like it's either gonna be two swinging side doors or it's gonna be like one big garage style door that goes like that uh, maybe put some like hood struts on it or something you know so it's nice and easy to lift but yeah I haven't figured that part out so we're just gonna screw some plywood up against it just to um, winterize it a little bit while we're gone I think that's about it. I mean, other than that, cleaning up the mess that we made and loading that TNG inside the house. So that does it for video, whatever the heck this is. And uh, hope you guys liked it. Not a whole lot of useful information, but you know. Just an update. It's a good update. So like, subscribe, notifications, you know, do all the stuff that you YouTubers do. We'll, we'll talk to you later.